Now at 10, we'll tell you about some upgrades coming to the Glendale community. Plus, doctors tell us Mississippi has the second highest mortality rate for a certain cancer, how it impacts men in the Magnolia State and how to prevent it. And our weather is not looking too terribly bad across South Mississippi tonight. But what about the rest of the weekend into your weekend? We'll talk more about it coming up. But the news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Two people are dead after a crash involving a bus with Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. The victims were in a separate car involved in the crash. Mississippi Highway Patrol reports the crash took place a few miles west of the Pike County, Walthall County line. The bus was carrying the MGCCC's band to summit for the Thursday night football game at Southwest Mississippi Community College. The wreck claimed the lives of two people in a separate vehicle. No student was injured in the crash. It made HP is handling this investigation. Another investigation is underway in Collins after a shooting earlier this week sent a woman to the hospital with minor injuries. Collins Police Chief Joey Ponder tells us it happened Tuesday night at the Meadows Apartments. He says a woman was shot during an argument, but she only had a minor wound and was treated and released from the hospital. All right, Pine, but we're going to switch gears now to our first alert weather team, and that is Patrick for us this evening. Patrick, what can you tell us? Yeah, we're, we're not looking too terribly bad out there tonight here across South Mississippi. Temperatures are sitting into the 70s. We've got clear skies here across the region, and all in all, it's not a bad night here in our neck of the woods. Currently 75 degrees out of USM, and as we take a look at our temperatures, we're cooling down. 74 right now in Purvis, 73 in Moselle. Is 71 in Waynesboro, 72 in Oak Grove, and 70 right now up the road in Taylorsville. So things are continue to quiet down for the rest of tonight. In the morning, when the kiddos get ready for the school, temperatures will start off into the upper 60s, and then when they head home, a little warmer. Sunshiny day, though, 93 for your afternoon, and uh, it's a little bit on the warm side, but at least it'll be bright and sunny, and it'll be a very nice day across the area. Now, what are, what do are we have in store for your weekend and? What about that system in the tropics that we've been tracking? We're going to talk more about all of those and more coming up in just a few minutes. Patrick, thank you so much. Good news for the Glendale community. New renovations are coming to a local park. WDAM 7's Delaney Dukes tells us more. Lots of updates to the Glendale Recreation Center since District 2 Supervisor Sharon Thompson took office nearly five years ago. Recreation is always good for any community. They need to have recreational facilities. That's my opinion, and, and that's the entire opinion of the Board of Supervisors. In her first term, Thompson says they built this brand new community center facility and now they're moving outside to the recreational areas. Since the beginning of this year, the recreation area has received new playground equipment and a new walking track that was attached to the existing trail, which was completed about a month ago. I've lived out here probably about 30 or 40 years, and I walked on this track in the back of the building, and I never felt secure. So it was my idea when I became a supervisor that the track needed to be extended to the front of the building for the safety and security of those people who use it. In the back of the grounds, crews have started getting rid of trees to make way for a new basketball court. This was made possible thanks to ARPA funds. But these new amenities aren't the only projects going on in the Glendale community. Thompson says that there's been a continuous effort by the board to address flooding concerns in the area. We've also filed an application to address the flooding in the Glendale area. We've submitted paperwork, but we've not gotten um, any type of response on that because I know that that's first and foremost in a lot of people's mind. Thompson feels that it's important to continue to reinvest in the green spaces in her district. These are the people that I represent, and I want to represent them to the best of my ability. So by doing that, the board allows us to create these green spaces to make life more livable and a healthier environment for those people that we represent. In Glendale, Delaney Dukes, WDAM7, on your side. The process on the new basketball court will begin after the 2025 fiscal year budget begins October 1st. The city of Lumberton is working to revitalize their town by holding property owners accountable. Right now, there are several properties going through litigation. The code enforcement officer says the process of getting these properties taken care of is slow and requires collaboration between the community and the city.
basic process of code enforcement is to make sure, as I stated, that everyone lives in a safe and lawful community. With that being said, we are still working on the best practices and the process where it is not just fair to property owners, but to the community as a whole. City leaders say proper code enforcement is the first step towards raising property value and getting more funding for the town. The Mississippi Court of Appeals convened at Southern Miss for the first time in nearly a decade today. A three judge panel heard oral arguments in a manslaughter conviction from Hancock County. It was all a part of the Court of Appeals Court on the Road program. Dozens of USM students went. Most of them are in the university's legal studies program. The judges did not speak about the case on appeal. I had never gotten an opportunity to see an appeal, and um, I've really enjoyed that aspect of it. It gave us a better chance to understand what it means as a whole to really be an attorney. A total of 10 judges are on the Mississippi Court of Appeals. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Courtney Ann Jackson explains where Mississippi stacks up against other states and how learning your risks uh, has gotten less invasive. Most men diagnosed with prostate cancer don't die from it, but in Mississippi, those stats look different. The Mississippi has the second highest cancer mortality as it relates to prostate cancer. Dr. Justin Turner is the chief medical officer for the Department of Health. He's heard the complaints. A lot of men don't go to the doctor because they don't want that finger test. Yet he's here to tell you there's another way. The United States Preventive Task Force has decided that the digital rect exam should no longer be considered a screening tool to test. So, man, you hear that? Now you can get that early detection through a simple blood test. PSA, which stands for prostate-specific antigen, so the prostate gland produces it. And when this PSA level, you know, usually are at way higher levels compared to uh, the normal, that could mean prostate cancer. Senator John Horn has made it a point to raise awareness by working with a friend who is a prostate cancer survivor. The fact that um, it, it, you don't have as, as good of an access to health care in the state as other parts of the country really uh, to me uh, is, is almost criminal that, that we're allowing this to happen because uh, it is a, a preventable disease and, and we ought to be trying to keep as many folks here as possible. Age is the biggest risk factor. But an even more important risk factor is family history. So if anyone has any relative, first degree relative, uh, parent, grandfather who has prostate cancer, you are at high risk and if you are at high risk, you really need to be going to the doctor and you need to be screened at earlier ages. Men at the highest risk are advised to get screened by 45, but most insurance covers testing starting at 40. Courtney Ann Jackson, WDAM on your side. The Department of Health is teaming up with a prostate cancer support group known as You Are Not Alone. They are offering opportunities for men's health screenings and finding ways to spread the word about early detection. All right, still ahead at 10. It's been more than a week since Hurricane Francine made landfall. A look at how Mississippi farmers fared after the storm.